Thank you, Attorney. Justice uh, Hermosishima. Good morning, Attorney Morales. Good morning. Any relation to the ombudsman? Uh, no relation. <laughs> no, no, no relation at all. I was hoping you'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tremendous inherent power in the hands of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court require that those appointed to the position should possess the highest degree of competence, integrity, and judicial prudence. Because the administration of justice is a sacred task entrusted only to individuals with the highest degree of competence. A judicial position is a position of honor and is offered only to those who are best qualified. You have never been a judge before, nor were you a justice of the appellate courts. Um, how do you assess yourself in connection with these ideals? Well, I have the requisite competence, integrity, probity, and independence. As I said earlier, the cornerstone of the practice in my firm is integrity and excellence. And we have been doing that since the time the CCP law was founded in 1945. We are an apolitical firm, and we do not uh, subscribe to, uh, to uh, political connections in the pursuit of our legal profession. And I'll be bringing with me uh, no baggages with me, no strings attached when I become if ever, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Well, uh, your senior partner, Justice Feliciano, was together with me in the Supreme Court. And I can say without any opposition that he is the paragon of a good justice. And so if you are a member of his is a firm, then the possibility is that you are also of the same mold. He is precisely my model, uh, Mr. Justice. What is your judicial philosophy? If you become a justice of, a chief justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. Justice, <clears throat> it judges, uh, judicial philosophy or decision-making process is largely shaped by the code of judicial conduct. Canon 3 of uh, the code states that a judge must uh, uh, determine the facts and apply the uh, applicable law to the set of facts. So if there are clear-cut legal norms applicable, I would simply apply the legal norms to the set of facts. However, there are situations where there are no clear-cut legal provisions or norms that are applicable. But I have to decide the case because the instruction in Article 9 of the Civil Code is that no judge shall decline to render judgment because of the silence, obscurity, or, or insufficiency of the laws. But in those cases, I have to navigate uncharted waters using my experience as a guide and <clears throat> guided by my beliefs. Can so there's a spectrum, one end of which is judicial activism and the other is judicial restraint. I will be inclined to be an activist if, 
a person is unreasonably deprived of his life or liberty or even property, or if there has been a grave abuse of discretion on the part of a particular branch of government. So for instance, uh, if I may illustrate, if I were a justice of the Supreme Court at the time the case of Allied Banking Corporation versus Court of Appeals was decided, I would have dissented because in that case, the majority expanded the coverage of the trustee's law in violation of the fundamental tenet that <clears throat> penal laws must be strictly construed in favor of the accused and its scope should not be expanded by implication. On the other hand, if I were age, part of the Supreme Court at the time, the case of Salvation versus Central Bank of the Philippines was decided, I would have sided with the majority because there, the Supreme Court prevented the, a foreign national who had raped a 12-year-old Filipina from using as a defense the, the provision in the Foreign Currency Deposit Act prohibiting the garnishment of his deposit. If the Supreme Court did not allow the garnishment of the deposit of that foreign national, justice would have been compounded. Justice would not have been served to that rape victim. But then, Uh, uh, to summarize, <laughs> if I'll give you an example, oh, when, right. you, when you enter the portals of the Supreme Court of the United States, you will see emblazoned the following words, equality under law. It's a revelation of the court's judicial philosophy. Uh, here in the Philippines, uh, the, the Supreme Court of the Philippines, what do you have? Batas Bayan. That's their short term. Now, the integrated bar of the Philippines has this. No master but law. No guide but conscience. No aim but justice. In your case, what do you, how do you shorten your judicial philosophy? I think it's, uh, those motos are just a short restatement of the concept of independence. That the judge must uh, dispose of uh, a case purely on the basis of merits in accordance with justice and law without being influenced by any extraneous factor. Do you abide by the uh, judicial philosophy of the integrated bar of the Philippines? No master but law, no guide but conscience, no aim but justice. Yes, justice, yeah. Why, what is your concept of justice? Justice is being able to uh, provide uh, speedy disposition of, disposition of cases uh, because justice is delayed is justice denied. So, on, on what basis do magistrates um, base their opinions, their decisions? On the basis of law. In the basis of law, yes. So if the law does not coincide with your conscience, will you abide by the law? I think uh, unless amended, the applicable legal norms should be applied, Mr. Justice. If the law does not coincide with, the, with your concept of justice, will you abide by the law? It depends on the factual circumstances at the time. I, I am between judicial activism and judicial restraint. 